Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the debate of the candidates for Hamden County Sheriff. My name is Mike Dobbs. I'll be your moderator this evening. I'm the managing editor for Reminder Publications. And first, let me introduce the candidates for Sheriff of Hamden County. In alphabetical order, they are Governor's Counselor Michael Albano, City Counselor of the City of Springfield, Thomas Ash, the Deputy Superintendent of the Hamden County House of Corrections, Nick Kochi, the Assistant Deputy Superintendent of the Hamden County House of Corrections, James Gill, and retired Addiction Services Counselor, Jack Griffin. This evening, we're gonna have the opportunity of asking the candidates questions, and I will ask some questions, but more importantly, my colleagues in the press are going to be asking questions as well, and they are Elizabeth Roman from the Republican and Mass Live, Paul Tothill from WAMC Radio, and Ryan Walsh from 22 News. We're gonna have an opening statement for two minutes each for the candidates, then I'll ask them the first, can the first question of the evening. There will be a chance for the reporters to ask follow-up questions if they deem necessary. There will be the opportunity for the candidates to address things if their name is mentioned in the answer of another candidate. We want this to be not just a debate, but also perhaps a little bit of a conversation among these men. This, as you know, is a very important position and is undoubtedly the most important political race that's facing Hamden County this election cycle outside of the presidential race. So first of all, we're going to have a period of two minutes for each candidate to introduce themselves. And I'm going to start at the, at, uh, the bottom of the alphabetical list with Jack Griffin. Jack? Hi everybody, I'm Jack Griffin and I'm running for Hamden County Sheriff here in 2016. Uh, about 20 years ago, I ended up in the Connecticut prison system as a substance abuse counselor trainee. And uh, I got bit by the bug. Uh, I've had a lot of success. I retired about four years ago. I wanna come back to my hometown and I'll help some of these kids that are really affected by drug abuse in the city and in the communities. Uh, the position of Hamden County Sheriff is an important one. I believe my skill sets, my determination, and my heart will carry me in this position. Uh, I want to say to everybody on the board right here, um, I want to keep this up front and honest with everybody about this really important position. Um, we're all qualified. I just believe in my heart and my guts that I'll do the job as the Hamden County Sheriff better than anybody on this field. And I want to thank you and ahead of time and for, for your support out there and my candidacy for Sheriff of Hamden County. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Jack. Next, we'd like to pose the same question to Mr. Gill. Good evening, everyone. My name is James Gill. I am an assistant deputy superintendent at the Hamden County Sheriff's Department and Correctional Center. My reason for seeking this office out of a great sense of humility and sincere respect for the legacy of our beloved Sheriff Michael J. Ash Jr. is to not only build upon and finish his legacy, but the reason why I'm running is because of my strength, my strength of character and commitment to our inmate population. Secondly, my stability. I have been in the Sheriff's Department for 25 years without fail and without incident. And lastly, my skill set. I possess a Master of Science degree in Criminal Justice Administration from Westfield State University. And because of this, I believe I am a very suitable, if not the best candidate for the Office of Sheriff. Thank you, Mr. Gill. Next up, Mr. Kochi. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to first uh, thank Focus Springfield for hosting the first sheriff's debate uh, for the election coming up in September and then again in November. I'd like to thank Elizabeth, Ryan, and Paul for being here as our panelists, and Michael as well for being our moderator. 23 years of correctional experience. 23 years of walking the tears of the Hamlin County Sheriff's Department. I started as a trained correctional officer out of the academy. I worked elbow to elbow with the offender population. I then became a supervisor, and I then supervised the staff in the offender population before I became an administrator. 
and presently today, I sit in the chair that oversees the daily operations of the Hamden County Sheriff's Department. I'm extremely proud of the work that we do each and every day at Hamden County. We're proud of the staff. We're proud of the work that entails taking offenders from the community who come in angry. They come in drug sick. We take them in on day one and we try to provide them a safe and humane institution that is conducive for positive change. And that's what we do. We also know the obstacles that are, are going to meet these offenders upon their release. It's a three-legged stool. We have to find employment, housing, and we have to encourage them to in continue to go to their wraparound services. I hope at the end of tonight's debate you will see that Nick Kochi is the only experienced candidate to be your next sheriff of Hamden County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kochi. Next up, City Councilor Mike uh, Thomas Ash. Thank you, Mike, and thank you uh, to Focus Sprintville for sponsoring tonight's forum. My name is Tom Ash, and I'm a candidate for Sheriff of Hamden County because I understand the important role that the sheriff plays in our community. I decided to enter this race because I saw a need, a need for a, for a professional, someone who has real correctional background and also political background, which I think is vital and important to the role of, of the sheriff. Some candidates in this race have vast experience in corrections, and some have vast experience in politics. I'm the only candidate who has both. I'm a 50-year resident of the city of Springfield. I began my career in directions walking the tiers of the old York Street Jail. I went on to uh, serve 18 years in both Worcester and Hamden County, working under four different sheriffs. I served 10 years on the Springfield School Committee in the last seven years as a Springfield City Councilor, chairing the Public Safety Committee for each of those years. I firmly feel that the next sheriff of Hamden County has to have a strong management background in corrections, but he also has to have the political background and the political know-how to go to Boston to fight for our fair share. I hope to prove to you over the next several months that I'm the right candidate, the right choice to be the next, can to be the next sheriff of Hamden County. Thank you. And Mr. Albano. Thank you, Mr. Dobbs, and good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Albano. Uh, many of you uh, may know me as the former mayor of Springfield, but I've also served as a member of the school committee, city council, city council president, currently a member of the governor's council. But in my prior public service career, I was a probation officer in the Westfield District Court and got my start with Sheriff Ash. I was appointed then to the Massachusetts Parole Board by three governors, Governor King, Governor Dukakis, and Governor Weld, had a chance to travel throughout Massachusetts and hold parole hearings at each and every correctional institution across the Commonwealth. In addition, I uh, had a chance to work with the sheriff relative to reentry programs. And uh, my current position as a member of the Governor's Council, I'm in the unique position of selecting judges, confirming judges offered in the past by Governor Patrick and now by Governor Baker. In fact, we have three vacancies on the Supreme Judicial Court coming up uh, in the next few months. I say all that because if you combine all of that, my term as mayor, we have uh, 32 years of experience in the field. And I've had my share of time in Boston fighting for Springfield and fighting for equal education and money, fighting for such projects as the Massachusetts uh, uh, the Civic Center Project, uh, the Basketball Hall of Fame, bringing resources back for community policing and for quality education. So I uh, ask you to take a look at my experience in the correctional system, my experience as mayor, my experience in delivering uh, results to the citizens of Western Massachusetts. And I hope at the end of the day that you'll choose Mike Albano to be the next sheriff of Hamden County. I'm looking forward to a lively debate with my distinguished colleagues, and I again thank you for participating in this important event. Mr. Dobbs indicated it's an important race, it's an important job for Hamden County. Thank you, Mr. Albano. All right, I'm going to get things started with uh, the first question, and then we're going to uh, bring up uh, my colleagues. And I'd like to direct this question to um, Mr. Gill. I, would you please describe what is the biggest challenge that is currently facing the Sheriff's Department? And Mr. Gill will answer, and then each of you will get a chance to answer the same question. You go first, sir. Thank you, Mike. I believe the greatest challenge facing this Sheriff's Department is to have an administrator someone who understands people, that can relate to people, 
and more importantly, to effectuate the change within the facility, which right now, I believe we need someone to help boost the morale of the staff of the department, as well as to bring the leadership for the offender population. I believe, more importantly, that what we need most is a strong administrative leader, someone who will remain focused and committed and will know how to get the job done with impacting the criminal offender that is resistant to change. Thank you, Mr. Gill. I'd like to ask the, the same question now to Tom Ash. Tom? Thank you, Mike. Over the past several months, um, I've been uh, meeting with uh, groups of correctional officers, 10 or 15 at a time, probably met with seven or eight so far. And those meetings have been very fruitful and very enlightening to me. And uh, to a person, all those officers are, are saying, as Jim suggested, that there is a morale problem. There's a cultural problem at the jail where the officers feel they're not being treated fairly. They're feeling, they're feeling left out, not part of a team. So my first uh, action as sheriff would be to set up a series of roundtables and work with those officers to find out what the cultural problems are and why they don't feel like their jobs are any more, deemed anymore, uh, one that are filled with integrity uh, and so on. So I'm gonna work on that very, 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 very diligently uh, to make sure that they feel part of a team and that they feel rewarded and their job is a noble one. Um, so that's gonna be, I think, w one of the main things that I'm gonna start working on right, right off the bat. Thank you, sir. Mr. Griffin, how would you answer that question? You know, there is a morale problem. The frontline people and the frontline staff feel slighted, and some of them have talked to me. The first thing I would do would be to address the needs of the workers in Ludlow. If somebody's working there in a block and doesn't have the, the, the means to get things done, um, as an administrator, I would address those needs. The administrative position of sheriff is only good enough because of the people that are actually working there. We're working with them, but they also are working with us. So the first thing I would do was to bring that morale up by engaging with the frontline people on what their needs truly are. Thank you, sir. Mr. Albano. Thank you, Mr. Dobbs. Uh, I'm going to take a little more global um, approach to the problems at the Hamden County House of Correction. We're losing people every day to this opioid epidemic. It's a crisis. And yet there is not an action plan in place in Hamden County. It's very rare in public life that you get a chance to save lives. So the number one priority of Michael Albano will to be put together an action plan to attack this opioid epidemic. And I'm going to treat it as a public health crisis, not a criminal justice matter because people who need treatment deserve it, they sh and we should demand it, and we should have in place programs so people who want treatment can get it and not have to wait 10 weeks. I'm also concerned about the minimum mandatory sentences which have a disproportionate impact on communities of color, and I'm surprised that no one has taken any action to rescind that law that goes back so many years ago, but it only um, fuels uh, racism, I believe, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts relative to those who are incarcerated. But we've got a lot of work to do, there's no question about it. Um, and these are some of the bigger, bolder issues that I wanna tackle as sheriff. Uh, Mike Ash has done a good job, but elections are about the future, not the past. And it's time to move on, build on what Sheriff Ash and his team has done, and take a more a global approach to the problems of criminal justice in Hamden County. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kochi. Thank you, Mike. Well, first of all, the number one thing pressing for Hamden County Sheriff's Department is this election. It is extremely important that we pick the right individual. Now, when you finally pick the right individual, we gotta look at, uh, we've heard so far about morale. I am a correctional officer. I've worked the blocks. I know what the correctional officers do every day. Mm. Nobody will be more empathetic and understand the quality of life issues that the men and women are facing each and every day than a Nick Kochi Sheriff Administration. So when it comes down to integrity, I, our jobs as correctional officers is always done with integrity, and I'll tell you, it is sought out 
and respected throughout the entire criminal justice system. Now, Hamden County's been doing a lot for addiction services, especially the opioid crisis. We started an addiction center back in 1985. It started as an alcohol center. But in 2001, we opened up the Opioid Dependency Relapse Program. We put 17,500 people through our addiction center since it's open, and we have a 90% success rate that have gone through there. Our program at our addiction center is a 13-week intensified program. The first seven weeks are very in-house, deal with education and treatment, and then the last five weeks turn out, and what we do is we bring them into the community, we educate them to where they need to be, we bring them to their wraparound service appointments, but most importantly, we start to break down the barrier from incarceration to being back in the community. Very, very proud of what we've done for addiction services to date, and I know we can continue on that same platform under a Nick Kochi administration. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Mike. Kochi. We're gonna take a very brief break. We're gonna bring up my three colleagues from the press. They're gonna ask questions of the candidates. So we'll be back in a moment, and please stay with us. And we're back. Thank you for coming back with us here. The first uh, reporter to ask a question of our panel is Paul Tuthill from WAMC Radio. Paul? Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, my question is for uh, Governor's Councilor Albano. Um, other than uh, the budget that is controlled in Boston uh, and an annual audit that's done by the Department of Corrections, there is very little outside oversight of the sheriff's departments in Massachusetts. What would you do to increase transparency if you're elected sheriff? Well, one of the uh, public service positions that I've held in the past, uh, I was a state auditor, and I believe the office of the auditor uh, should be more involved in all of the departments. It is a very large budget, and Suzanne Bump, I think, has a responsibility to come out and examine some of these accounts. Um, I've asked for the Sunshine account uh, through a Freedom of Information request. I've been denied that. We now have to appeal it to the Secretary of State. I've asked for information relative to the 24 uh, consultants that have been hired, apparently uh, using the inmate commissary fund. I've asked for um, an accounting of that through the Freedom of Information uh, Act request. I've been denied that. So I believe this is a time and a place for the auditor to come in, make these accounts known, and uh, show to the public how exactly this money is spent. I'm particularly concerned about the inmate commissary money because that's supposed to be for direct impact services to inmates. And what we see now is that consultants have been hired to do not direct impact uh, work, but to do other things. So the auditor should be, and I will ask, and I have asked for the auditor to come in and do a full financial audit, but also to get into some of these program audits. Okay, we're going to ask the same question for Mr. Griffin. Well, I think the inmate account services program at Howard Street uh, allows uh, people to um, interact with the clients at Howard Street on a lower level. Uh, I don't know about the um, upper management people that are grabbing a lot of money, um, but the lower level, it's worth it because these people are actually 
uh, almost volunteers that are coming in that are being paid a spit of just to help out with inmates that are in Howard Street. And it's a great program from what I understand. As far as the money is concerned, yeah, they'll figure out the money, I figure. You know, these guys are getting paid big money up front. Let them figure it out, see what happens. Mr. Ash. Thank you, Mike. I think it's typical for any uh, anytime there's a change in administration that the stated auditor would come in and do a full audit. I certainly would cooperate and ask uh, Auditor Bump to uh, to do that. Uh, I also think there are other uh, organizations like American uh, Correctional Association that regularly comes in and, and evaluates and assesses the operation of the Sheriff's Department and certainly would, would continue that. I know in the past that's been a very successful operation uh, for the Sheriff's Department. I also think I would institute an open checkbook, much like the state does uh, and, and, the city, and the city of Springfield does now, so that the public has open access to see how their tax money is being spent. And that's an idea that I certainly would float and, and, and consider for the Sheriff's Department as well. I also would form an advisory board, uh, made up of all a representative from all the 23 cities and towns in Hamden County to have full access and full awareness in cooperation with the Sheriff's Department to know where the money is being spent in each community. And I think that's uh, four areas that I would uh, do immediately, Mike. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kochi. When you look at transparency, uh, that is exactly what we do each and every day and each and every year. Uh, Auditor Suzanne Bump did come in this past year and audit all of our accounts. And we <clears> passed with flying colors. We do not just go down to Boston and deal with the governor uh, on just an occasional audit. We deal with the Department of Corrections audits every six months, Department of Public Health, Department of Mental Health, the Department of Criminal Justice and Information Services, the Bureau of Prisons. We deal with state and federal agencies on a constant basis, coming in and seeing exactly what type of work we're doing. The Hamlin County Sheriff's Department is audit ready every day. That's how we operate. We are prepared for anybody to walk into our institution and take a look at what we do. The American Correctional Association is one of the, the foremost leaders when it comes to corrections in America. We have an auditor that came in and said, we don't know how a facility like this even exists in America today, and we're very proud of that. Lou Foligno from the, uh, from the PREA audit, it's the Prison Rape Elimination Act, came in and said he would have been honored to have worked for such a fine institution as the Hamlin County Sheriff's Department. So when we talk about transparency, we have it. We have nothing to hide. And as I move forward in, in this election and, and I w go out and meet the voters, I'm making one pledge, that I will be responsible to the taxpayers of Hamlin County and to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and I have a proven track record on how I've done that as an administrator and how we've closed units reallocated resources, and we've always come in with our budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Gill. Yes, fiscal planning is the foundation of any administration. You must be accountable. You must balance books accurately. And more importantly, I believe that you must have oversight. The Hamden County Sheriff's Department under a Gill administration will always have full transparency. We will comply with every single financial request or audit from state and federal authorities. But more importantly, one of the things that I have as a vision for the Hamden County Sheriff's Department is to have the first of its kind, the very first of its kind, report. It's going to be a county correctional report on a quarterly basis that will be published so that every citizen of Hamden County might be able to take a look at it and see exactly what's going on from a financial perspective. Thank you, Mr. Gill. Next up with a question will be Elizabeth Roman. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Kochi, you touched on this earlier, but I'd like to know what do you feel the Sheriff Department's role and responsibility is in addressing the current opioid crisis, which, as you know, has devastated and has had deadly effects in our community for many years? Well, thank you, Elizabeth. That's a great question. I think the Hamden County Sheriff's Department plays a tremendous role in the opioid uh, crisis. When you look at our population, our population, 87 percent of the people that come into incarceration have a substance abuse issue. 
45% of those people also come in with mental health issues, which turns us into a co-occurring disorder. So when you look at how are we going to start to even get our offenders to a, a state where we can get some good cognitive thinking going on and better decision making, we have to first stabilize them. So when we come in, we start to first of all manage a very safe and humane environment. We try to break down the barriers that these men and women have been tragically influenced by out in the community. The Hampton County Sheriff's Department has a substance abuse program that is inside the medium facility walls. They have a 28-day program. We then step down to our minimum security facilities and we intensify that type of programming. We then walk them out into the community with our reentry approach with an individual service plan on how we feel and this individual feels that they can best survive with some long-term sobriety back in the community. See, the key is this. We have to help people feel good about themselves, get them into a state of mind where they are feeling good and they want to maintain that feeling. And we do that with a relational model with our aftercare, incarceration support services, and by walking the offender directly into their AA or NA meeting. And how do we do this? We do this with 100 volunteers that come and donate their time to our addiction center. Volunteers, they come in and they sponsor and they mentor. This is how we get our individuals to get to their service plans and get to their appointments so they can be on the best footing when they get back into the community so they can hopefully make good decisions as they move forward and be a better productive person back in society. Thank you, Mr. Kochi. Um, Mr. Ash, how would you answer that? Thank you, Mike. So in addition to the, to the programming uh, Mr. Kochi described within the, uh, within the institution, I think the answer is twofold. One, I think the uh, Sheriff's Department can play a, a key role in, in an educational process, get into the schools and become part of the fabric of the curriculum. Mike, there's really talented people that work uh, at the House of Correction. Uh, many of the counselors, if not most, um, are MSW certified or higher. Some are doctoral candidates. And the correctional officers themselves are very, very talented and educated and professional and can become a part of the, of the institutional uh, correctional or institutional educational programming, talking to kids about their decisions around drugs. That's one thing the sheriff can do is become part of the curriculum. Another thing uh, that, that the sheriff can consider is many people aren't, don't know that fi five pods are currently closed down within the correctional facility, four in the, in the, in the main institution and one in the pre-release center. There's potential that one of those pods could be used for treatment on demand for opioids for opioid families in crisis. Judges can set, can can ask for uh, that particular, a particular person to be sectioned under Mass General Law to be in, in a civil commitment and, and to provide those beds for those families that are in a real critical crisis and people are dying. And and, and the problem is that there aren't beds uh, available for families that are in that kind of a crisis. So that's one area. That's two areas I think that the sheriff could could really be a part of the answer towards this to, towards the opioid crisis. Thank you, Mr. Ash. Mike, Mr. could I have a rebuttal on that? My name was mentioned. Let's do this at the end. Um, let's everyone go through, then we'll come back. Thank you, Mike. Okay, Mr. Gill, your answer to that question, please. All right, thank you. Yes, Mike, we do have a substance abuse program within the Sheriff's Department, a 154-bed unit. 77 of those beds are for an intensive program. We also have a Department of Public Health grant that we receive in the tune or the amount of $96,000 per year to help with the uh, management and the programming of the substance abuse unit. 87% of the offenders that come in to us are addicted to drugs or alcohol. However, we understand that this opioid crisis is a disease. But more importantly, we need to understand one thing, and that is the alternative. The choice is to not use. And I believe the Sheriff's Department can do a much better job, especially provided we have more funds, to go out into the community, into the schools, and to provide education for our youth and young adults to steer them away from the option of using drugs. This is what I believe. If I can change how you think, I'll change how you feel. And if I change how you feel, I'll change how you behave. So the choice today is about families. And a Gill administration will always be concerned with your family. Thank you, Mr. Gill. Mr. Griffin. The Sheriff's Department needs to step up its game in the community. 
The Sheriff's Department does a hell of a job addressing the inmates that are incarcerated. They do. They have various modalities that they kick in that help. But some of these kids are getting that degree. That's where they got it, little degree. And they walk out of there and the recidivism rates are going back and forth or high. What they need to do is have more continuity of care in the community. The after incarceration programs that are great, it takes less money to treat them than to incarcerate them. It's that simple. I believe that the Sheriff's Department could be utilized a lot better in the community with kind of like a community enforcement engagement teams, not in just high crime areas. These are highly trained correctional personnel coming out of the academy with great interpersonal skills. Put them in the community. Help them engage the community. Help these little headbangers that are, that are just acting like knuckleheads. If you get to them at that juncture right there, education is the key. But kids are dying, man. Kids are dying out here. We're losing a whole generation. And it's not just in the, in the black community or in the Hispanic community. It's all over the place. These kids are dying. This job, and under a Griffin administration, is going to reach out to the community. That's what I'm going to try to do, is be there for these millennials that are really screwing up out there. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Mr. Albano. Thank you, Mr. Dobbs. Uh, my approach is totally different than my uh, distinguished colleagues here. I want to build a 205-bed facility on the site of the Ludlow Correctional Center. Uh, 80 or so beds would be those for who are confined and committed, and the, other, and the balance would be those who want treatment on demand. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a criminal justice problem. This is a public health crisis. Pe four people are dying each and every day in Massachusetts from an opioid overdose. And we have to do something about it. And to suggest for the moment that the current model is working is simply wrong. Uh, it's been inadequate and it has not addressed the true needs. Um, I'm encouraged by the chief of police in Gloucester who has opened up uh, his police department doors for those who want treatment. Anybody who is involved in substance abuse uh, and wants treatment can go to the Gloucester Police Department, turn in their drugs, turn in their paraphernalia, and be referred out. The chief was just recognized by President Obama at the White House uh, last month. Um, this is a public health crisis. We've got to, we've got to uh, put programs in place so people who want treatment can get it and don't have to wait. We don't have that currently. Uh, this is something I've discussed with Governor Baker. I think it's cutting edge. I want to bring in the people from Bay State and um, all the health care providers from Mercy and make sure we have the necessary facility and the necessary resources. So if you want treatment for a severe substance abuse problem, you're going to get it and you don't have to suffer the consequences. If you look at the recent st statistics that just came out in Massachusetts, every county in Massachusetts has seen an increase in opioid deaths, except for Hampshire County under the leadership of DA Dave Sullivan. We should take a lesson from him and follow by example and create an action plan here in Hamden County to address this crisis. Thank you, Mr. Obano. I know that Elizabeth has a follow-up question before she comes up for that. You'll have a one-minute time for a rebuttal. Thank you, Mike. At the Hamden County Sheriff's Department presently, we are in the schools. Our substance abuse uh, counselors are in the Springfield school system going in and talking about the right way to take care of your body and the mental and wellness of what needs to happen. We have uh, truancy officers in the city of Springfield that are going out and grabbing the kids and bringing them back to school so they're not at home starting to further go down the road of substance abuse. But a 200-bed facility in Ludlow, it's not going to work. See, the importance of an addiction center and giving treatment is to be where the wraparound services are. See, the city of Springfield has a majority of the people going back into the community. And when they go back, they need to have that relational model going into their appointments, into the places where they're going to continue their treatment. And that's why it's important that we have that facility there. Not to mention, there is no place in our Ludlow campus to build a 205-bed facility. We are have okay, you're at, swamp you're at lands. Your time, Mr. Kochi. I, uh, well, I respectfully disagree. You, well, did, you did mention me, so I'd like to point that relative to my proposal. So I'd like to respond to that pursuant to the rules, Mr. Dobbs. Right now, I'd like to have Liz ask her follow-up. And this is not going to be a topic that's going to be ending right now, Mr. Obano. We have many more questions about this. Don't worry. You're going to have plenty of time. Thank Liz? you. Well, I think 
like I get to answer it right now. My question was just for you to clarify if you meant that this would be a facility separate from the current uh, Western Mass Addiction Center, which is scheduled to be placed at the Mill Street facility. Well, uh, I'm opposed to Mill Street as I was opposed to Wasset Avenue. You, you don't put a jail, and this is a jail, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a reentry program. It's a jail. Those are people are committed. You don't put it in between two residence A homes, and you don't build it on Wasson Avenue in the north end where so much money has been spent to redevelop that neighborhood. So the, the uh, location of, of my proposal is in Ludlow, and yes, there is space, and we will provide the necessary resources, but anyone who suggests that the current model is working is simply wrong. It's not working when people are dying on our streets. We've got a lot of work to do, but the current model of putting a program uh, on Mill Street does, is not going to work. I'm adamantly opposed to it. We have a hearing before the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, this Wednesday at 6 o'clock, and I hope that board takes a good look at it because what the sheriff is trying to say is that a jail is a lodging house. It is a lodging house, and the city of Springfield is going to issue a permit to have it go on Mill Street. It's wrong for the neighborhood. It's wrong for the city. It's the wrong program in the wrong location. Mike? All right. We're going to go to the next question. We're going to re be vi revisiting this issue about the addiction center in a moment. And the next question goes to Ryan Walsh. Mr. Griffin, we'll start with you here. The Hamden County Sheriff's Department has been a nationwide model for the treatment of inmates and their programming. A big part of that comes from state funding. Springfield, for example, or Hamden County, for example, that is, gets about $38 million roughly more a year than Worcester County. How do you plan as sheriff to continue to get that financial support from the legislature? Well, the money is needed. The money is definitely <clears throat> needed. Uh, you know, it's a $78 million operation. And I believe wholeheartedly that our legislators that work here in Springfield are adept at going and getting that money. As a new administration, as a new sheriff, I would go to Boston, I would articulate what we needed, and I would ask our legislatures for help. Because there is a problem going on here with what's going on with these kids in the community. These kids are really starting to get so involved in this whole drug culture, and it even hasn't even hit yet. There's a meth epidemic that's floating in Springfield hasn't seen nothing yet where this thing hits. We need to get more engaged and we need to really step up our game if we really want to start helping these kids. Okay, next with that question would be Mr. Ash. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> our budget uh, process or our budget uh, outlay is, is second only now to, to Suffolk County. And how often do we hear um, that we're second to Boston in, in, in the state in Hamden County at any time? That's rare. And so the reason we'd be able to do that in my estimation, Mike, is because the sheriff has built capacities over, over the course of his career, built relationships uh, with other politicians, particularly with our local delegation, but also with leadership at the state level. And so, so Mike Ash has been able to bring that money back home. And he gets that money because not only is, is he understanding the political process, but he's a good correctional manager. And that's why it's important, as I stated early on, that is twofold. You have to have the political knowledge and you have to have the correctional experience and the correctional know-how. And Mike Ash has demonstrated that and that's why we're, we get, we're second to Suffolk County and bringing money back to the Correctional Center. Very, very important. Mr. Obano, could you answer the question about uh, the resources? I would. Let me just uh, have a news flash here. Um, in this business, when you're out, you're out. When you're gone, you're gone. And when Mike Ash leaves, he's done a great job. But I can tell you that <clears throat> Sheriff Evangelista, uh, Evangelista is from Worcester, Sheriff Tompkins, Sheriff Pilati, Sheriff Katujan, they're all waiting for Ash to leave so they can go after that, that budget. That's just the way it works, ladies and gentlemen. So I can tell you the next sheriff from Hamden County better have a good working relationship with the legislature and a good working relationship with Governor Baker. I do. I've worked with Bob DeLeo. I've worked with Stan Rosenberg. Got a good working relationship with Charlie Baker. It's going to take a guy like Mike Albano to save that budget because I can tell you these guys are circling the wagons to go after Ash's budget. They've told me so much. So it's going to be a challenge um, financially to make sure that that money stays in Hamden County. Now, I've had a little bit of experience at the State House. I brought back money for the Basketball Hall of Fame, for the Civic Center, um, for educational funding for children, for Shannon grants, for law enforcement grants, and I can do it again. But this suggests that the new sheriff can go down there without a working relationship with the governor and the legislative delegation. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, 
that budget is going to be cut and cut dramatically. Thank you, Mr. Obino. Mr. Kochi. Thank you, Mike. I couldn't disagree more. When I look, for, I look forward to going down and sitting down with the legislature and seeing the governor about our next budget. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down a bunch of evidence-based programming results on what we will spend that money on. See, Sheriff Ash has been a great correctional administrator. He's been around for a long time. He knows the legislator, and he's done a great job. But see, the key to going down to Boston and asking for money is to produce what you're going to do with it. And I look forward to going down and sitting with all of our local legislators, the governor. I've sat with the Speaker of the House this past year. I just saw the governor a week ago. I, I was on the phone with the Senate president. They know who Nick Kochi is. And they understand that I know the job of corrections. And when I go down to Boston and I bring the evidence-based results that which we're doing each and every day, and we have to report this out to the Mass Sheriff's Association. I know Sheriff Katujian. I know Sheriff Bowler. I know Sheriff Tompkins. They're very good friends. And I look forward to working with them and then having them continue to come to Hamden County to see exactly how we can help them be a nationally recognized model in the United States of America, to be a model that has been recognized by our governor, our present governor, for our employment specialty programming. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Gill. Yes, Mike. Well, I take a different approach. I look forward to being the new and the youngest sheriff in the county. Therefore, I look forward to working with my older brother sheriffs, learning from them, and more importantly, making it very clear that James Gill is not Michael J. Ash. I do not believe, regardless to who the sheriff is, that he's going to be able to get any extra money out of Boston during his first term in office, perhaps even up to his third. So what is going to be required is that we follow the budgetary process for submitting our budgets to the State House, to the Governor, to the House, to the Senate, and getting back the results, what the funding is going to be allocated, and of course allowing it to go through conference committee and then coming back down so that we get our budget. My intent, ladies and gentlemen, is to do just what you and I have to do as householders every single day, and that is to live within the budget that we are given. I'm not interested in advancing the footprint of corrections. I'd much rather see us advance the footprint of schools. We have the largest school district in this area. And if you look at it, we have a let the last census report that I looked at, we have 74,455 students, 10 school districts in this immediate area. And we need more money allocated for schools, for educators, for teachers, and not just to try to build our way out of this by locking people up more and more. So my goal will be to live within the budget I'm allocated. Thank, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Gill. Okay, our next question will be from Paul Tuthill. Uh, and uh, this question is for um, City Councilor Tom Ash. As was mentioned earlier, a, a, a high percentage of jail inmates are people with uh, mental health issues. Um, studies have found that uh, practices including um, solitary confinement, use of restraints, other punishments can do serious long-lasting harm. What policy would you put in place as sheriff to see that jail does not compound the problem of mental illness? Thank you, Paul. I think it's obvious to any, any modern correctional administrator that, uh, th that inmates or anybody else needs to be treat treated humanely. And I've worked in, uh, in, in correctional facilities, uh, two, the three, including your street, and I've seen the detriment that, that, it, that those kind of situations locking people up in, in, in the hall and, and what that does to people, and it's, and it's horrific. 
Um, my, my role and my, my capacity as a correctional professional has been in the rehabilitation uh, arena. I've worked at Day Reporting Center for seven years, appointed by, by Mike Gash, and worked out in the community and working with families and making sure that people were treated fairly and, and people had a, a chance to move on and, and graduate from, from the facility into to real meaningful jobs and becoming uh, real members of society. So I understand the, the, the past practices and what, what they did and what they did to people and, and how detrimental they were. And so I'll, I'll look at that and make sure that uh, that uh, under my administration, those practices, and I'm, I'm sure they're not that way now, that there is a much more humane process that we're going through. So we understand that the major, majority of, of new inmates coming into the facility have mental health problems, and that, that's just a fact. So uh, treating people with uh, dignity and humanity um, is, is, is really a hallmark of, of modern corrections, and it's something that I'll insist on uh, as, an, as an next sheriff of Hamden County. Thank you, sir. Mr. Obano adamantly opposed to solitary confinement. And let me just tell you a few um, stories about the mental health situation in Massachusetts. And I was on the parole board. We saw it virtually every day. And we tried to appeal to the legislature for more funding for more mental health counseling. Uh, not too long ago, a young man by the name of Joshua Messier was essentially killed at Bridgewater State Hospital, a young man who had mental health, severe mental health issues. I pleaded with Governor Patrick to put more money into the budget. He did, but yet we've, we've not come nearly as far as we should relative to mental health treatment. Uh, I've sat down with the chairman of the parole board and I've asked him to make Hamden County a model relative to getting the treatment that people need while confined relative to their mental health challenges. And we can do a lot more. So what I am doing is trying to reorganize the budget allow for more funding to go into mental health treatment. I think we can do it while those are incarcerated, but then there has to be follow-up treatment as those who leave the facility can get treatment on demand as they go out, and it's consistent treatment with no breaks. Um, so there's, if anyone suggests that we've made progress in the field of mental health to those incarcerated, I believe they're wrong, and we've got a lot more work to do. Uh, I've seen the uh, problem firsthand. Um, I've talked to uh, governors, I'll continue to talk to the legislature to make sure that money is available for that type of treatment because people who are incarcerated deserve it. And you know, uh, part of our role here is to make sure that people come out, they're much better than they went in, and you can't do it if you don't have appropriate mental health uh, treatment programs. Thank you, Mr. Obano. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gill, how would you answer that question? Very clearly, Mike, and thank you so much. Um, I, for one, have believed that the current addiction center is best suited at its current location in Holyoke, the current uh, former geriatric center of Holyoke. The reason for that is because in visiting that site, talking with the staff and the offenders that are housed there, everyone loves it and feels that it would be the best place. But primarily, there are two other buildings that are there that are unused, and my vision was that we could take the $10 million that was being requested and certainly uh, look at those other two buildings, revamp them, bring them up so that one of them would be a mental health unit. The mentally ill is a very serious, serious issue today facing corrections, if not more so serious than the opioid crisis. We do not need to confine or incarcerate, if you will, those with mental illness. They need to be in a hospital kind of setting or treatment setting and cared for in a very loving, nurturing, and professional way. And that's one reason why under a Gill administration, every inmate will have to have family involvement at the beginning of his or her sentence. We're going to deal with the mental health illness very, very carefully. Thank you, Mr. Gill. Mr. Kochi. Thank you, Mike. First of all, uh, Holyoke doesn't work. I was just there uh, two weeks ago, and we had our Department of Corrections audit. And we did extremely well. But the one continued comment was is that the facility itself is running down. It's broken. It's a temporary site. When we moved from Howard Street to Holyoke, we had 100 volunteers that would go and help mentor our offenders. Within three weeks, we were down to 20. It's location driven. So Holyoke is not the proper place for an addiction center because we won't be able to have those wraparound services in that continuity of care and treatment 
that needs to happen for long-term sobriety. Segregation reform. I was just out in Colorado at the large jail network, the NIC, National Institute of Corrections, and Hamden County was recognized the entire conference because of our new segregation reform policy. We are not locking people up in segregation for extended periods of time. We do, however, have to have a unit where we can have a cool off. Inside the facility, it can get violent. And we have many gang issues and classification issues that have to be managed. And yes, we've closed five pods. And for every pod we've closed, we've saved the Commonwealth $500,000. When your budget gets cut, you have to make adapt and you have, to, you have to make adjustments with what you have. So when you look at segregation reform, we talk about the mental health. We have an, an, uh, an emergency stabilization unit that is regional for uh, Hamden, Hampshire, Franklin, and Worcester County in the Berkshires. We house it right at Hamden County Sheriff's Department. We have mental health clinicians. We have mental health clinicians that go out into our pods and we work extremely hard to keep our offenders that are, have a mental health issue, we keep them very, very closely watched so we can keep them medically compliant so they can make good decisions Time in their is, incarceration. Time is Thank you. Um, finally on this question, Mr. Griffin. I think that uh, I'm probably the only one here that has walked death row. Segregation can be useful. Sometimes there's trouble in prison. So it's needed. I've seen people locked up in segregation for a long period of time. It is not healthy. It is not good. I do not believe in it. As far as the mental health is concerned, the addiction piece and the mental health piece, they run hand in hand. We have to do better. As a sheriff, I would ask the people that know what to do put them together and come up with something. What Ash has done, he's laid a great foundation, but it's the 21st century. It's starting to move out here in the streets. It's getting worse. I want to be a part of the solution, not the problem. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Next up with a question is going to be Elizabeth Roman. I think we'll just continue on the subject that we had discussed before about the addiction facility. There's been a lot of questions surrounding the facility, uh, Western Massachusetts Correctional Addiction Center, and its relocation, first to Wasson Avenue, now to Mill Street. One candidate, Mr. Albino, and the question is referred to you. Um, you referred to the facility as a jail. I'd like to know from all of you, how do you define the facility, and do you support its relocation to Mill Street? If not, uh, give me an alternative plan for where you think that it should go. You directed yes, sir, Mr. Albano. Yeah, Mr. Albano, you're up first. Thank you, uh, Mr. Roman. Uh, I, I've been opposed to Wasson Avenue and I've been opposed to Mill Street um, for obvious reasons. These are neighborhoods, and you don't put a correctional facility in a neighborhood. And why they picked the North End, why they picked the South End is beyond me. Um, they're trying to go in under the Dover Act, which um, defines a what they would have defined as a correctional center, a jail, as an educational program. The planning department for the city of Springfield is now trying to claim it's a lodging house where four or more unrelated people living together who pay rent uh, would then qualify it as a jail. Uh, this is simply wrong. Uh, there's a reason why you have residential neighborhoods and there's a reason why you have correctional centers. And if this is allowed to go and stand at, at Mill Street, for example, or as the sheriff wanted on Wasson Avenue, every neighborhood in Hamden County would be open for a correctional center. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no case law on this. The only place a correctional center has been cited in Massachusetts by, is by an act of the legislature, and we should keep that in mind. It's the wrong program in the wrong place. Uh, my suggestion, as I've outlined before, is to bring it back to Ludlow, and have a complex that'll treat 205 people, those who are incarcerated, and those who want treatment on demand. This opioid crisis is no longer just confined to the inner city, as some have suggested, to the back alleys of the inner city. It's real, and it's a public health crisis. We've got to change the model that we're dealing with, and we've got to make effective use of the resources that we have to save lives. Thank you, Mr. Obano. Mr. Griffin. Well, first and foremost, treatment is education. Anybody been down Mill Street lately? I think that that facility is gonna enhance that community. My own personal opinion. 
I think that the modality itself and what needs to be done is the continuity of care that they get in a Springfield-based facility other than a Ludlow base, because they're just moving them from one place to the other. It's got to be a segue into a nice facility that is monitored and adhered to, such as Howard Street was when it was at Howard Street. If Mill Street is run correctly, and if Mill Street is, is, is anything like Howard Street, it's gonna enhance the community, and it's gonna help the kids, and they are kids, the average age is 20, going down there to deal with the continuity of care with recovery. Sobriety is about change. Change is inevitable. People's resistance to change gets them in trouble. The bottom line is, everybody that's coming back out into Springfield, 67% of those kids that are in Ludlow are coming back to Springfield. So the support services are in Springfield. Just the bus lines itself, these kids ain't got licenses. There's certain things that need to be done and it needs to be accessible. I think that real simply, the Mill Street facility, even though what was not uh, adept to the families that were around there, it was kind of you know sideways then, bottom line is, it is gonna be a good facility and I think that the community there will eventually accept it just like the ones in Howard Street. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Mr. Kochi. Thank you, Mike. I agree with Mr. Griffin. Uh, I support the Addiction Center in the city of Springfield. I gave you the reasons why earlier tonight. Uh, it, it looks presently right now that we are going to Mill Street. But I'll say this, the old ring nursing home on Mill Street was being used for prostitution and drug uses. It was being ravaged with crime. As of right now, none of that's going on. I'll make a pledge to the community up on Mill Street. And it's a pledge that we as Hamden County have made in every community we've ever gone. We will be a good neighbor. We will continue with community restitution. We'll continue to work on in cleaning up the streets. We will work on beautification projects inside of our neighborhood. See, Mill Street is on the bus line, as Mr. Griffin said. Mill Street is a neighborhood of education and treatment. We are looking to put an addiction center there. There are gonna be no fences. There will be no barbed wire. There will be no alarm sounds. It's gonna be conducive to treatment. We want to help the people of our community. We've all talked about the addiction and the opioid crisis. We need an addiction center. We've all talked about how can we do more for the community. We need this addiction center. And I pledge to you, that when this addiction center is finally sited up and running, that I, as your next sheriff, will continue to provide a relationship with the community members. We'll hold meetings, we'll have discussions, but just like everywhere we've been to date, when we do have to leave somewhere, people don't want us to go because we've been a great neighbor and we will continue to be a great neighbor to the city of Springfield, to the community in which we're in, and everybody else in Hamden County. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gill. Yes, thank you, Mike. In one sense, Mike, this is almost like a moot question for me because the issue has already pretty much been settled. But I also need to be quite honest and upfront with you in saying that, yes, the Hamden County Sheriff's Department does have a reputation, a very strong one, at being a good neighbor. And regardless to where we put an addiction center, if you cite it on the moon, we're still going to be a good neighbor there. And yes, we'll go out and clean up the neighborhoods of the moon. We'll get moon rocks and whatever have you. But the bottom line to me is that the Holyoke site, in my opinion, was the best site First of all, why was it chosen in the beginning? It was chosen, I believe, because it was chosen as the best site at, that was available. In addition to that, I've sat with Mayor Morse. Mayor Morse wants the facility to remain in Holyoke. The neighborhood has no problems with it being in Holyoke. My opposition to the reciting of this center has been because wherever we have gone, Watson Avenue or Mill Street, it it, it wound up creating anger and frustration and resistance from the neighborhood. And to me, that's wrong. You don't force your way in on people in order to get done what you want to get done. So I believe it's best sighted in Holyoke. The atmosphere is beautiful. 
change happens there still every single day. And not only that, again, because it's a mood issue, wherever we go as the next sheriff, I'm going to make certain that the same philosophy and model continues to work. And yes, we will be good neighbors and clean up the streets. And finally on this question, Mr. Ash. Thank you, Mike. I voted uh, along with the rest of the city council uh, in favor of, of citing the, uh, the addiction center in Springfield. And I attended meetings in the Mill, uh, in the Mill Street corridor area with the residents there and, and listened to both sides and some were uh, opposed and, and certainly some were, uh, were for. Um, but as a Springfield resident, I know, understand uh, the fact that not, people oftentimes don't want something like a correctional facility in their neighborhood. I, I get that. But I also have to take into consideration uh, what the benefits of, the, of the, the facility are. And it needs to be in the downtown corridor. It needs to be around the core services that it provides. It needs to be along the bus lines. It needs to have access to the volunteers who want to get in there and help. You know, I remember um, as, a, as a kid, a young kid, probably 12 or 13 years old, uh, attending meetings uh, in the South End with the sheriff. Um, and listening to the residents at the time, I remember people like Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Pepe and, and An Angie Florian and, and Leo Florian really be adamantly opposed uh, to having that center located on Howard Street. And, but, I, but, I, but I'll tell you today, if you went and talked to Angie Florian and Leo Florian, they'll tell you that it's probably one of the best things that ever happened in that neighborhood. And it stabilized it and brought, it brought some stability uh, to, to the entire neighborhood. And it can do the same thing, I'm convinced, of it in Mill Street. So that it almost serves as a, as a police substation. It's running orderly. Um, and, and people look at it that way, and, and, I, and I really feel that over time uh, that will be the way that it's, that it's judged. Mr. Ash, thank you very much. We're going to take a short break at this point. We have about a half an hour left in our debate. Ryan Walsh will be asking the next question, but stay with us. Thank you.
And thank you very much for returning to our debate. We're going to have one final question from our staff of reporters. This one will be from Ryan Walsh. <clears throat> Mr. Gill, we'll start with you here. Have you or do you plan on accepting any campaign contributions from employees of the Sheriff's Department or family members? And if so, or if any of your fellow candidates here do, how would that impact promotion decisions or discipline decisions? Thank you, Ryan. First of all, I've not uh, yet had an opportunity to look at the contribution from every person that has donated to our campaign as of today. But I do know that I have received contributions from mm. staff in the Sheriff's Department, as well as a couple of family members. I am totally against nepotism. And I do not believe that someone uh, donating to my campaign would be a cause for me to award them with a job. One of the benefits that I have as an independent candidate is very simple. I have no favors that I owe. And I'm very proud of that fact that I'm standing in a position to be the people's sheriff, not necessarily the sheriff of a party. And so my concerns for promotion from every level is that it will be open, transparent, and fair, and based purely upon merit, skill, and ability. And more importantly, a person's interest in doing the job and the promotion that I see coming forth will be to allow the staff to have a say as to who gets promoted, not just my decision alone. Thank you, Mr. Gill. The same question, Mr. Ash. Thank you, Mike. Um, to my knowledge, I, I probably received some uh, campaign contributions from, from members of the uh, Hamden County Correctional Facility, but they're the same people who have been donating to me over the course of my career, and it's minimal. I certainly haven't targeted uh, others to be, uh, to be uh, donators, donators uh, with some kind of a promise to be uh, for advancement and, and so on. It's not who I am. It's not who I would ever be. Uh, conversely, uh, I wouldn't target someone who, who donated to somebody else's campaign. Uh, in my estimation, we, uh, come January 5th or January 4th, when, when the new administration starts, uh, everybody will be, will be on a uh, level playing field, and we'll start there. Um, I'm not affected one way or the other of, of who, camp, who contributes to who, certainly not who hasn't contributed to me. Uh, this is certainly not the way I've, I've conducted myself throughout my political career, and I won't start now. Thank you, Mr. Ash. Mr. Griffin. Well, first and foremost, I'm not a politician. I'm a lifelong correctional professional. And if people from the Ludlow uh, Jail threw a campaign to me and came to a campaign party, I had a kickoff. It was a bunch of guys from Forest Park that showed up in the Elks, and we packed the joint and raised some money. So there was probably some that did uh, donate and come to my campaign. As far as the other things is concerned, listen, this business is about people. It's about hiring good people, and it's about promoting good people. They do their jobs well, they get promoted. If you're good at what you think you're going to do and bring inside a, a, an institution, you got a shot at getting a job. you got to keep these things simple. This is too big of a position not to get the right guy in there. And I really believe in my guts and in my heart that I'm the right guy. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Mr. Kochi. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I have received uh, quite a few contributions from the staff at the Hamlin County Sheriff's Department, and I'm honored. Who has more at stake but the men and women who work at the Hamlin County Sheriff's Department of who their next sheriff's going to be? They do. And I feel blessed that I've been supported, not just financially, but I've been supported with volunteer work, phone calls, standouts, door-to-door -door canvassing. These are all the men and women that are saying, Nick, we need you. We need you to be our next sheriff, and I will do whatever it takes to help you. So I will continue to take contributions from our staff if they so choose. I'm not soliciting them. What I really need is their support and their vote. When it comes to the promotions, I've worked with all these men and women. 
We have a promotional exam. We have interviews. We have a tremendous process in how we promote people. <clears throat> and you know, if you make a promotion, say you make two sergeants, but 45 people put in for the promotion, you've offended 43. And 43 people will probably feel we got it wrong. As Mr. Griffin said, we have to hire good people to do a good job, and I know we've done that. We have to continue to hire good people to go up the ranks at the Hamden County Sheriff's Department, and the pool that we have is tremendous. It's a very hard decision to make an appointment at the Sheriff's Department, not because of nepotism, not because of campaign uh, donations, because we got great staff, and they do a great job every day, and it's very hard to single one out and leave others behind. So when it comes to moving forward, I know I have integrity and we have a process and I will make sure that that process is upheld. Okay. Um, finally. You just invoked my name so I figured I'd respond. Do I get a chance to answer the question or not? Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Mr. Albano will have the last answer and then if you want, you have a, a rebuttal, but go ahead, Mr. Uh, Albano. Thank you, Mr. Dobbs and uh, Mr. Walsh for the question. When I announced my candidacy uh, for sheriff, I stated publicly that I would not take any uh, contributions from employees or their family members from those who work in the correctional centers in Hamden County. Um, and I disagree to the point where, yes, those employees certainly have a stake in who the next sheriff is, but the bigger stake is for the people of Hamden County. Uh, and it's critically uh, important that we get this one right. Uh, I've said in the past, I think it's too political at the House of Correction. I have great respect for, for Sheriff Ash, but I think there is a public perception that it is too political. So I've said that I'm not going to seek any political endorsements in this race. I want this to be a campaign for the people of Hamden County. And with that, there'll be no political contributions from employees, from attorneys who work um, uh, for the sheriff, uh, vendors who are involved, I want to make this a people's, true people's campaign. So no contributions, and I'm not seeking political endorsements. <clears throat> okay, one minute rebuttal. Mr. Griffin? Well, uh, a grassroots campaign like mine that has absolutely very little money, uh, actually, to be honest with you, I don't, you know, people are going to give money to candidates that they feel comfortable with, whether you work for the Department of Corrections or you're the ex-mayor or whatever it might be. The people are going to give you that money. I think personally, just my own personal opinion, that if that's the case, so be it. But it, let it not interfere with somebody getting a promotion or a job. That's just wrong. This is too much important in this. And we're talking about our communities here. We're talking about people and kids that are dying. That's how important this is. So yes, if you gotta have a little money and people are gonna come in there, hey, fine. You'll get yours, you'll get yours. I'm going to throw another fundraiser and see what happens. Okay. Mike, Mike uh, on, on, uh, uh, referred over as far as uh, being the person who's getting the contributions from the jail, I would just like to say to I, Mr. Well, Albano. I, I didn't think I did next. Well, well, I didn't. Okay. Well, I just want to well, say I'm that as governor, by, by the rules, I'm not you're taking any contributions. You're, okay, you're by taking, the rules, we, we said that if you mention someone's name, there'd be time for a rebuttal. I've been good. trying to stick to that. Very good. Um, I don't think that Mr. Albano named any other candidate uh, personally, so... Let's, let's go on. We're, ending, we're getting toward the end of our time. We want to mm -hmm. give each candidate two minutes to sum up. Um, I want to thank, by the way, my colleagues in the press, mm -hmm. Paul Tuthill, Elizabeth Roman, and Ryan Walsh for sacrificing part of a Monday night in order to ask uh, a bunch of questions to some candidates. I'd certainly appreciate it, and they've done a great job. We're going to do the closing um, alphabetically, starting with Mr. Albano. Each of the candidates will get two minutes to sum up their positions, sum up some of the answers they've given here tonight. Mr. Albano. Thank you very much, Mr. Dobbs, and thank you for being the moderator and for having this uh, forum for Focus Springfield. I want to thank my colleagues here, all distinguished public servants. I appreciate the work that you do. It's not easy to be in public life these days, but you have uh, four good people here, and I appreciate that the, work you, the work that you do and have done for the people of Hamden County. Um, this is a critical race. And people say to me, uh, Mike Albano, why are you running? And as I tried to outline at the beginning, if you look at my background and my experience, it almost becomes a perfect fit. 
I've had time in corrections, probation on the parole board. I've had a chance to oversee a police department of almost 600 uh, when I was the mayor. I've had a chance in the last four years to choose judges, confirmed judges offered by Governor Patrick and Governor Baker. So I offer that experience. And I offer also my connection in Boston. And I think it's important because I've outlined here there's going to be physical challenges. And I think people should know that the next sheriff of Hamden County is going to have a huge task to go down there and continue the funding at the current levels. I've delivered in the past for the people of Western Massachusetts, and I believe I can deliver in the future. This is a job that I believe is so important. It's saving lives. We are losing four people a day, every day in Massachusetts, to this opioid epidemic. It's time to change the model from a criminal justice model to a public health crisis. Um, it's a new vision. I want to pick up where the sheriff has left, and I want to make this um, a critical time for Hamden County relative to the criminal justice system and saving lives. I'm Mike Albano. I seek your support. And I want to thank you uh, for viewing this, uh, this important debate this evening. Thank you, Mr. Albano. Mr. Ash. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for the panel and also to Focus Springfield for, again, for sponsoring this event. Thank you to my, my friends and colleagues here who are also seeking this position. As I stated in my op opening remarks, it is obvious to me uh, that the next sheriff of Hamden County has to have real, substantive, and genuine experience in both the correctional field and in politics. I know that based on my experience and my education that I am both the best suited to provide that, that experience and to run effective, uh, man uh, manage the facility, to manage staff, to manage the budget. I can do all of that. I'm confident in my ability to do that. What I've also been doing over the past three years as senior vice president of the YMCA of Greater Springfield is fighting for families, fighting for families for quality before and after school programs, fighting for young people to have access to summer programs and summer camps, fighting for young people to have access to quality summer jobs, and, and, providing, and keeping them from being distracted from, the, from what we know, the temptations that are on the streets. I've been working very, very, very hard uh, in that capacity to make sure that Springfield's a better place. And I hope that the public would also agree with me that the next sheriff, the truly dynamic sheriff, is what we all seek, and I think that I'm the best person for that position. I, and I humbly ask you for your support and your vote on September 8th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ass. M Mr. Kochi. Thank you, Mike, and thank you to Focus Springfield and our panel, uh, and again, the colleagues here at uh, our table. Uh, everybody's done just a great job, and uh, thank you for being here tonight. The fiscal challenges that we look forward to I've worked through. I can remember back about seven years ago, our budget was cut 10%. And we were forced with having to reallocate resources, close housing units, and we had to figure out how we were gonna do all this without laying people off. We exercised a, a, a program called WorkShare. And ultimately, we just couldn't get by it without letting go of our last academy that came in. But see, the great work that the staff did, and the administrators, we offered each and every one of them their job back. Because again, we saved where we could save, but we still continued our mission. And we did it, and we did it well. See, as we talked about all these different things in the community, we talked a lot about opioid abuse, we talked a lot about fiscal challenges, we talked about Mill Street, and we talked about the addiction center. But I'm here to tell you, there's a lot more to being your next sheriff. There's a lot of work that goes on up in Ludlow behind those fences. And see, that's where I am every day. Every day I punch that time clock and I go in and I manage a correctional institution. 1,400 inmates, 900 behind the main facility walls. And we do it with dignity, class, respect. We do it so the offenders are moving forward towards a progressive uh, re-entrance back into the community. And we do it on behalf of the citizens of Hamden County. So I wrap up. I ask you humbly for your consideration and support, but most importantly, your vote on September 8th. And it's a Thursday. I look forward to serving you as your next sheriff. And rest assured, I know how to do the job. I've been doing the job. And I will do the job for you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kochi. Mr. Gill. Yes, thank you. I, too, extend a very uh, sincere thanks to Focus Springfield, our panelists tonight my esteemed colleague, and also to you, Michael. Uh, it has really been a pleasure to be here with you. However, I need you to understand the reality of where we are today. We're talking about the next six years. And one of the things that the Hamlin County Sheriff's Department
government needs more than anything is a strong administrative leader who has the touch and the feel of what happens every single day within the Hamlin County Correctional Center. I have been there and I have worked there from the bottom up to where I am today. I've done that with dignity, honor, and with consistency. I believe that the next sheriff needs to be someone who can provide not only the leadership, but the motivation for the staff and the offender alike. For the past year, all of the programs that I have overseen have shown a success ratio of 97.6%. And for the past 14 years, all of my successes have been in the 90 percentile. I understand what it is to manage budgets. I understand what it is to hire staff. I understand, more importantly, what it is to change offender behavior, to change the mindset, because this is what it's about, putting correction back into correction. And I humbly ask your consideration, your support, and your vote as the people's sheriff of Hamden County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gill and Mr. Griffin. I also want to thank you guys for having us here. It's a very important elected position. I am not a politician. I'm a lifelong correctional professional. I deal specifically with substance abuse. I work for one of the greatest organizations in the United States, the Department of Corrections in Connecticut, and I learned from great people and worked right along with them. I want to transfer that stuff into the Hamden County House of Corrections. Give me one chance, one chance is all I mean, to affect the change that needs to take place. All the issues that we've talked about, they're all legitimate. We need somebody that's gonna take the lead. I've been a leader my whole life. Anybody that knows me knows that. I want one opportunity to do the right thing and to be of service to the people of Western Massachusetts. I love Springfield, it's my hometown. I grew up here, I haven't left. I'm in it because I want to make a difference. I want to thank this panel. I want to thank you, fellas. We'll see you on the campaign trail, guys. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Thank you very much, folks, for tuning in tonight. I think this gives you a great introduction to these candidates. We still have a long campaign left to go. It means that you'll have other opportunities to hear from these candidates. I urge you to go to their websites to see what they have to say about themselves and their campaign uh, positions. Thank you very much. Thank you again to uh, my colleagues and have a good night.